What's going on, guys? Back for vlog number three, four, four, four. We're yeah. experts. Yeah, and uh, we're this this whole vlog tonight is just dedicated to the playoff scenarios. Uh, in fact, the prep that went into this it was pretty stunning. This right here, Stump sent this to me <laughs> as an attachment on an email last night. I printed it out because I was thinking, you know. When I use the restroom and stuff at work, I usually try and memorize scripture or <laughs> work on my seminary. Well, this is what I did, but I had at least seven bathroom breaks this morning, so good thing I'm not preaching Sunday. So um, this was great. The playoff scenarios, they're tasty. Dude, it is, the league has never looked like this before, but I can remember so many different possibilities. I started running through the scenarios and I, I just had to start abbreviating because there are so many crazy ones that could happen. Uh, you know, Kug beats me by 1,400 and goes 2-0. and oh, And I, like, there's just absurd things. It's like, technically that's possible. Kug could drop 25 and I drop 1,100 and he, you know, he wins a tiebreaker. But I try to keep it to somewhat likely stuff. So let's first look at um, our buy scenarios. We got two guys going straight into the finals. Right now, you and Schwab are there by record. Verge is the other contender. Um, you're looking really strong. One win, and you're probably in. Um, Verge and Schwab is the where it gets interesting because Schwab's got the one game lead. Uh, he's going against Healer. Yep. Verge has got cleats. Is that right? Yep. Um, and so Verge needs to pick up one win on Schwab, and Verge has about almost a two or just over a 200 point lead. So. Uh, if Verge can get one more win than Schwab, he'll get that other buy. So that's going to be a coveted spot right there, straight to the finals. Yeah. Um, I like my odds to get that buy just based on number one in the league, number one on points four, things are trending right, and Breeze is playing at home. You've been on fire. And he's playing at home against the Lions. That's 700 points right there. Yeah, I mean, Cooks might even catch a pass, which would be great. <laughs> <laughs> dude that's so that was weird last week well i came home from church and i i pulled it up and it, it said cooks and eifert zero and i was still doing really good and i thought uh -huh. it was it was weird i i was wondering are either of them playing i had to do some research right it was, yeah cooks it, they said he played almost his normal number of snaps like he was he ran like 50 routes and didn't even have a target much less a catch. I know. I was, I was waiting for, like, fantasy cast to say, like, incomplete to Brandon Cooks. <laughs> Please. No. It, 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 I was waiting for it, and then all of a sudden I saw Willie Sneed, 50-yard co completed pass to Tim Hightower, and I'm like, <laughs> what the crap is happening in New Orleans? <laughs> it was really oh. weird to watch that thing. And, Cleats, I got to give you props, man. You legitimately scared me this week. <laughs> the explosion of the New York Giants D was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. That, that went down to the wire, dude. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Foz myself. I'm going to talk in third person. I'm going to take my talents to the, uh, to the finals with a bye. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a limb. I'm going to say Verge does this because I like his matchup better against Cleats. Yeah. So – I could see it. I could see it. I could see Schwab doing it, but I'm gonna say Verge. I think Schwab's got to get back on track this week. Um, healer. So I was looking at some uh, long-term trends here. Me and Healer are limping right now. Uh, we both in the last four weeks are one and seven. Whoa. He was in first place by himself, and now he's fighting for his playoff life. Big Daddy, on the other hand. Looked like he was out of things completely. He's nine and one in the last five weeks. That's huge. Wow. <laughs> big Daddy's on fire. And I still look at it. Rogers has turned it around. That's been a big piece. Yeah. But it's like week to week looking at that roster, and I still am not quite sure how he's swinging it. <laughs> wow. Good and, job, and Forte just keeps getting worse. I mean, <laughs> no, it's, he has some crappy performances this week, but then I don't, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Big so, Daddy is a threat. Dude, this last week, too, the crazy things were happening. Yeah. I, I told Dad on, at Thanksgiving, I said, I'm pulling Ted Ginn. He's due for a monster. And then I was watching him do nothing, 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 then 88-yarder to the house. And I thought, that's my sign. I called the Ted Ginn catch. I'm going to win this thing. And then the next possession was a 50-yarder to Kelvin Benjamin, and there went my week. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, 
It was wild watching the games this weekend. Uh, the other one was Wood, season basically on the line. In like two plays, Emmanuel Sanders put up like 200 points. And yeah. all of a sudden it was like he might beat Verge, and then he ended up vaulting ahead in a must-win scenario. He was looking like he could go 0-2, and, and all of a sudden he, he was 2-0. and That was huge. Wood, very much alive. So quick story from my other league. I was, I was down uh, 10 points. Uh, with Devontae Booker going Sunday night. And at the end of uh, regulation, which was a crazy Sunday night game, the fact it went to overtime was was nuts. I was down two points. Okay. And, uh, and so then he he had a run, like an eight-yard run, so it gave me a point. And then he caught the 23-yard pass, and the guy I was playing was so pissed he called me. <laughs> he was like, screw this thing. I'm, I hate fantasy football. I was just laughing. Yes. I'm 11 and 1 in my uh, other league right now. And That's so beautiful. Winner, winner takes 90 bucks. So, nice. in some ways, I care about that one more, actually. <laughs> Except you don't. Except I don't. <laughs> All right. So, um, we got some bias. It's going to be two out of three guys. I'm saying, I'm saying myself and Verge. I think Schwab's trending down. Yeah, he had a bad week last week, but there was some. Yeah, I'm not even gonna make a prediction because I don't care. Let's get into the. Let's get into the right. last three spots. Let's talk we'll, about. Let's, we'll start with the Big Daddy scenario. Big Daddy's in great shape. The only person that he doesn't right now have a tiebreaker on is me, points wise. And that's yeah. it's kind of a jumble. There's about a 200 point lead there. Then I think Wood was next, and I'm not quite 500 up on Wood. So that's possible for him to overcome. A few hundred more on Healer, about 700, and then Coog's in trouble. So Big Daddy, 2-0, and he's in. 1-1, one and one, probably in. 0-2, yeah. um, there's still some decent scenarios for him. If me or Wood are 1-1, one and one, he still probably gets in. If it's Wood, going 1-1 one and one also. Yeah. Um, so he, Big Daddy's – as close to a lock as he can be out of this jumble. I, I think his matchup with Gentry is huge. I think he's going to win. Just yeah. with Rod and Jordy, he's going to get 800 points right there. I, I, think, I think Big Daddy makes the playoffs. I'm going back. If you go to our vlog number two, I said Big Daddy is in the playoffs. I also said Coog. So. <laughs> I remember the Coog one. Big Daddy, yeah. So Big Daddy looks like he's pretty safe. Yeah, big guy. Yeah, interesting because lots of things can happen with Healer. Healer's got the matchup with Schwab. Yeah. Healer goes 0 2. He actually doesn't have many tie breaks at all. So he wants to avoid that at all costs. Um, the 1 and 1 would make it spooky because if Wood or I go 2 0 at that point, then that puts him in a little bit of trouble. But he obviously controls the destiny with a 2 0. He's an automatic in by record. So. Um, Healer's going to be a borderline. Even Coog, actually, Coog's only down. The healer, I want to say by six. Center, I think I have it written down just a second. Yeah. Koog is 594. So if Koog can go 2 and 0 and he's matched up against Wood, then he could even catch Healer with an 0 and 2 week. So many scenarios with Healer. I think Healer pulls a Greg Norman. I think he pulls the biggest <laughs> choke ever in fantasy football. 0 and 8 down the stretch. I think he chokes. I think his team is. Uh, it's it's good, but they're all personally they're not. I mean, Matt Ryan hasn't looked awesome the last month. Carlos Hyde trending down. Theo Riddick trending down. Brandon Marshall, where the heck has he been all year? Gronk only plays about every eighth play. I mean, the only guy that we love on that roster is Ezekiel Healer. I'm calling you out. You're done. It's over. See ya. Not going to the toilet bowl. <laughs> Oh, man, and Baldwin, too. If the line can't block, then, yeah, it's, it has not been pretty lately. I think he's uh, out. I'm next. I'm going up against you, unfortunately, because I'm, I'm in a strong position points-wise. I'm fourth in points, but that's not a pretty matchup. Luckily, Stafford is going against New Orleans in a Yeah, that's, he could really bounce back there. I, I need Stafford pulling that 400-plus for me because it's been a while. Um, and we need Rawls to bounce back. If I can get Rawls to bounce back. I think I have a chance at least to pick up one win. If I can pick up one win, then that hopefully I need to avoid Healer going 2-0. and But if I catch Healer, then I'm pretty much in. So I need to beat him by one win. 
he goes 0 and 2, I think I can get one. Uh, if I go 0 and 2, there's still some scenarios at play for me to get in, but Wood would need to go 0 and 2, and Coog couldn't go 2 and 0. So it gets a little spooky for me. Yeah, I, you know, I don't like commenting. Let me back up. Two months ago when I saw week 13, me and Stump going out, I thought I would be the one having to get two wins to get into the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> so being on this side of it, I wasn't quite prepared for. Um, so that being said, it's a mm, – I. I feel like you almost have to go high risk, high reward. Like if I was you, I'd be really wondering, do I play Marvin Jones? I, uh, he is on my radar. I haven't decided who I'm doing at wide receiver two yet. I think I have Tyrell Williams in there at the moment. Yeah, I might. I actually might ditch uh, Rawls or Gore. Yeah. Bring McCoy up and possibly. But it's, it's a live by the sword, die by the sword. But if you built the whole idea around Stafford's going to throw – and go nuts, right? Never broke, season on the line, all in. I, you know, I, I like just straight mono a mono. I don't know if, like, I don't know if your squad. I, I, I feel like my squad is just like a better version of your squad. Yeah. Like, pretty. I mean, probably. Bell's probably, the better version of McCoy. Yeah, Bell's a Bree's a better version of Stafford. Gurley and Rawls are a wash right now. Bell's a better version of Bez. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I'm wondering where you're gonna get those. I mean, you could go one on one just by being top five, but I don't I don't see that squad unless my guys just take a dump, which is possible. Not with Breeze. I I'm I'm hoping for one win and I need a healer. Uh well I guess healer would have to go 0 and two at that point. Yeah. So I I'm I'm in a dangerous spot. Or Wood needs to go one and one also. I think I like your odds of getting a win over Healer's odds of getting a win right now. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Well, and I tell you, the biggest way for me to get in is Wood to not win more than me. If we get the same record, then I'm getting in. And right now, Wood's going to need to pull something out of his hat. Let's get into Wood. Okay, let's get into Wood. I'm almost, I I think, 460-something points ahead of Wood. Okay. You need to outscore me by that much, or he need to beat me. He need to get two wins when I only get one, or he gets one win and I get none. Uh, but if you look at Woods' projectors right now, uh, he's he's bringing up the rear. Uh, he has no backs available. Unfortunately, his bye week is hurting him with DeMarco. So he's waiver wiring it on the running back situation, and it's just okay. not a pretty place to be when you look at waivers. All right, top waiver target right now. Ready for this? I don't know. Jalen Richard. Wow. He's projected for a, a monster 111. After that, it gets ugly quick. Paul Perkins, Dwayne Washington, Rex Burkhead. Whoa. Ty Montgomery, Jeremy Langford, yada, yada, yada. You get it. I yeah. I think Wood is going on too, and I think one of the greatest squads on paper is going to miss the playoffs because I loved this team after the draft. Yeah. Loved it. I mean, when I saw those WRs, I mean, good Lord, what's not to like? Allen Robinson, Sammy Watkins, Odell Beckham Jr. As your – I mean, good night. In August, that looked amazing. Mm-hmm. It's a nice year right now. <laughs> that was so funny because his back it was like where's he gonna get running backs from and then he ends up with DeMarco and Booker after Anderson went down but yeah saw it all year long yeah and Brady's been I, Brady's I mean it, on paper it's amazing but I I just think it's breaking wrong for him this year I think the fact CJ Federowicz is his tight end <laughs> <laughs> it just it's over. Like, he put the white flag up last week when he started that fool. He might need to go to Ripkowski again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, oh, Wood, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Wood and Healer might possibly – and I think Wood for sure is the outside looking in. I think you and Big Daddy probably make it. And then in the last spot is going to come down to Coog and Healer, I think. Coog's going to have to outscore Healer by 600. First of all, Healers would have to go 0-2, and Coog would have to go 2-0. and 
Yeah, Coop's not going to do that. Never mind. <laughs> I think Keeler still gets in. Keeler gets in. Okay, so he, so my my guesses are Wood and Coog are out. If yeah, because if if Wood goes zero and two and Healer goes zero and two, Healer gets in by record. He doesn't need the tiebreak. Yeah. So if Coog, Coog would then have to go two and zero and dominate Healer by six hundred points. I gotta see who who is team. Holy cow! No way. Um, <laughs> there's you know, watch on that. I, well, it goes back to. You can't trust paper because paper told me the Woodcocks were one or two in August. But listen to this on paper. If you would have told me three months ago this was going to be Coog's final lineup, I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> yes, look at this. <laughs> Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Spencer Ware, Jay Ajaye, Robert Kelly, Golden Tate, Devontae Parker, Eric Ebron, Patriots D. I would have loved that as a bench. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good bench. That's a starters, man. Wow. Yeah. Coog getting two wins is going to be tough. Uh, he's going to be the favorite on on Wood, but for one. Yeah. That's going to be rough. So I, I, if I was picking, I'm. I mean, I'm in that spot. Like as a Husky fan, every game just makes me super nervous now because so much is on the line. And that's why I feel with this. I'm not confident. I'm so spooked. I don't like going against Fosby. But that's because there's so much on the line. And I, uh, if I could look at it objectively, I'd feel like I have a better chance than Wood or Coog. But I'm still spooked. Yeah, I think, I think you, you sneak in. Um, Big Daddy is, I think, a lock. I'd be shocked. Yep. I'd be shocked if Big Daddy – I'd say Big Daddy has a 90% chance. I'd say you and Healer have a 65% chance. I think Wood has a 30% chance, and I think Coog has a 5% chance. It's pretty low. Yeah. So, it's going to be crazy. Uh, we'll get into some playoff favorites and stuff after things roll down next week. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. But – Tons of scenarios. Be watching those games closely this weekend. Are we gonna, uh, is, this, is this the Sunday to Google Hangout this thing? You want to try it? <clears throat> well, yeah. Um, if we op- we'll, we could, yeah, we'll, we could open up a, a, a chat room and get on there and. Yeah, we'll just throw a text out to everybody if we make it happen, and then people can try to hop on. I've never done it before, so we'll just play around with it and see what happens. Well, the Seahawks are actually in the evening this week too, so that's. It won't be in the middle of the Seahawk game. Uh, yeah, we'll just try maybe like at one thirty or 2. Yeah. yeah, after church, come home, have some lunch, and yeah. fire it up. Um, that being said, boys, good luck to you all. We're, we're no, we don't claim to be prophets here. We just call it how we see it. Um, nothing personal, Healer. I love you, dude. <laughs> you dominated this year. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping – I'm hoping uh, Schwab has to prove it, and not get that by. That'd be better for me, but we'll see. Make him earn his way. That's right. All right, man. Well, I can't wait to see these things. I'm going to be sweating it all the way through, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's what we do it for. Hey, last thing, um, dogs, top four. You mentioned them earlier. What, what, what's, your, what's your read on that situation? Um, I feel like we're – the rehab boys in Colorado is the Stizox. We're just like a little bit better version of Colorado. That's what it feels like. But of course, anything can happen any given week. So that's why I'm scared. Um, we win and we're in. My hope is that a win over a, a top eight team uh, propels us up to uh, two or three. And as conference champs, maybe they drop Ohio State down or Clemson down since Clemson's only playing Virginia Tech. And if they win, that Virginia Tech won't even be ranked anymore. So if we can avoid Alabama in the first round, I could see us totally making the finals. I think we're as good or better than Clemson or Ohio State. Alabama, it will take a brilliant game to pull that one off, no matter who plays them. What time is the Pac-12 championship Saturday? I want It's actually Friday, and I think it's at 6. So that's my Friday night right there. Beauty. All right. Go dogs. All right, buddy. Right on. All right, guys. Th- thanks so much. Check us out. Share us on Facebook, Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. And uh, (laughs) whatever. See ya. Okay.